What am I doing here? I don't know either, really. Have you come a long way as well? We've come up from S S6. Wow. South Gloucestershire. Oh, you're the Labour Party from Sefton and you're the Lib Dem. Yeah. yeah. Can't move for political activity. Gives a kiss. <laughs> Along with activists and media types, theories about the demise of this or that party have been pouring into Stoke over the last few weeks. The ordinary people want change. What kind of change? For us, the ordinary people. How do you cover a by-election where so much has been said already that it's becoming hard to think? Do you know who you're going to vote for? To leave the EU. Eh? <laughs> no, that was in we're June. The EU. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've sorted that one out. We're going. It's quite fancy going for a walk. It seemed the only rational thing to do. To walk away from all the noise to the outer edge of the constituency, speaking to whoever we encounter. Excuse me. Excuse me, we work for the Guardian. Oh, you don't? All right, Tyler. One of the first people we meet is the elusive Labour candidate, Gareth Snell. It's the candidate. Come on, we have got to go after him. Are we allowed to talk to you? Can we do it on the way back? Can we talk to you? you know, we've just got five minutes, but I'll talk to you for a minute. Tell me about Stoke as a Labour city, where it was now, and where, where it was then and where it goes now. Well, I mean, where it was in its heyday, you know, it was the centre of the ceramic industry and a big part of its heritage is still there. 10,000 people in the city are still employed in the ceramic industry. But if I, was to, if I lived here and I was to say to you, what can you do about these kind of eyesores and this sense of decline as the MP? The election has brought a lot of media to the city. You have highlighted what are possibly the worst parts of the city. And what I need to do is champion the best parts, the workforce, the, the countryside, the fact that we've got great connectivity, we've got a great uh, workforce ethic. And if we can do those sorts of things, we can encourage more people to come here. I really don't have to walk. I'm really sorry. I'm going to ask you one more question. Yeah. You've got a 21st century Labour identity. I have, stuff. well, I mean, if you, if you want to call by the office, what I have is a pottery's plan that will rejuvenate and regenerate the city centre as well as the other towns and the communities that have suffered. Stoke has a lot going for it. Some regeneration, a growing art scene, and pretty spirited, friendly people. But there are also too many visible symbols of decline. What happened to that? When did it sort of fall into disrepair? Years ago. Years ago? Years ago. The whole of the town's in a terrible state. <laughs> What's it like living among it, though? It's horrible. I hate walking through town. You know, you've got this election coming up yeah. next Thursday. Yes. You're going to vote? <laughs> Uh, possibly. Possibly UKIP, maybe. There he is again. Is this the nature of your life at the moment? No. You just do endless laps of the middle of Stoke-on-Trent? No, no, I went to meet some of the uh, PCS members who are being forced to relocate to Manchester or Birmingham. The government's taking some jobs out of the city because it prefers to regionalise them in the big cities. This is one of the problems that we have. We met a woman back there who was very saddened. She lived here all her life with the state of that disused shopping centre. Yeah, I'll say the, the, the council have a plan. She they're, said to shake things up she was going to vote UKIP. I, I'm sad that she thinks that because I don't particularly think that voting for Paul Nuffer in this election will change anything. He's only come here to make his name on his way to Westminster. But in a word, can we can people vote Labour to shake things up? I think so. Because UKIP have got a chance of getting in here, everyone who like, doesn't actually understand what Stoke is about and what the people who like here actually think everyone's a Neanderthal. Damaging, in other words. Yeah, it is. People do miss that there's all these sort of cultural things and everything going on. Our urban hike takes us to an estate not far from the centre, but a long way from any sense of cultural or economic regeneration. How's the place doing? Shit, mate. Shit. <laughs> you live on this estate? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. the only on this block here. Yeah. I'm, I'm the only one in, in the bottom. What are they going to do? Tear them down? I've been asking the council loads of times. They won't tell me. You know, there's a by election coming up next week. No, no, no. You get a chance to vote for your own. Oh, yeah, yeah, do yeah, you know, yeah. Are you going to vote? No. Can't see the point. Labour suck. Yeah. Why'd you say that? Because the shit, they're not, they're not doing anything for anyone. Look, look at how much fucking time they've had, what, 67 freaking years of controlling this area. What have they done for anyone? I mean, look, look at this, they're only starting developing up the flats now. They're probably going to fuck these off, man. They don't give a shit about us. And what's the alternative? You don't vote Labour, who are you going to vote for? I'm not voting for anyone. How old are you? Um, I'm 21 next month. Do you work? No, I come out of jail last month. Been out three weeks. Have you ever voted in the past? Have a fuck? No. There's a big cliche hanging over this by-election, which I suppose 
is about shouty, angry former Labour voters who might switch to UKIP. But there's maybe something bigger going on here about people who are completely disconnected from politics and who don't vote at all. We just looked this up on the phone and found that at the last election, the 20 seats with the lowest turnout were all held by the Labour Party. And the constituency with the lowest turnout of all was this one, Stoke-on-Trent Central, which had the dubious distinction of being the one seat in the UK where a majority of people didn't vote. So whichever way you look at it, politics here isn't working. You got short-term memory loss, that's the cost. The smoke in the pot till your brain's not boss. When the green crops are just not dropping across it. Buffed with the cross and rubbed it off you like a copper. No wonder I'm a potter, Stokey on the trend. Here to represent, go promote me for the rent. I suppose you never meant to get whacked with a rent. Why don't you vote? I don't know. It's not something I'd do. You don't know anybody who's voted? No. Wow. Mm. And there's the likes of me thinking this is all high drama and all that. Well, there you go, yeah. Not you. <laughs> the media's projected a lot of high drama onto this by-election, as if Stoke-on-Trent somehow holds the future of the country in its hands. But having walked through a large swathe of the constituency this afternoon, what we've tended to find is a lot of fatalism, disconnection, people not voting, even the people who are voting not talking about it with any great sense of urgency. For all the parties really, I suppose the question is how to re-inject politics in places like this with moral clarity and a sense of purpose. Right, in search of moral clarity and a sense of purpose in politics, we've come back to Labour's HQ where people from all over the country have come for a day's campaign in the door knocking. Where have you come from? London? Yeah. yeah. Some of us are from Stoke City. No, I realise yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> Not far from here, down there, yeah. there is a housing estate uh, where we met people yesterday who, uh, some of them were quite politically aware that they weren't going to vote. And okay. I would like to see what, we would like to see what happens when you if go. people like you go yeah. and talk to them. Do you fancy doing that? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's not the list we've been given. <laughs> It's a political experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Right, hats off to these people. These Labour activists have agreed to come back to where we were yesterday. So what's making you angry in this community at the moment? We're just from the local Labour Party. Not interested. Have you voted? Not interested. Brexit? Not interested. I'm Labour. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> it's the only logical uh, party <laughs> at the minute. <laughs> there you go. We're here from the, um, the Labour Party. Could you mind telling me what? Finally, we decide to try and find the 21 year old man who called down at us the day before. David! Hey, you there? Well, what are you going to do for the community and that? What do you think needs to be done for the community? <sighs> I don't know. Like, some better shit in it, like, you know what I mean? Like, Build fucking like I don't know like more youth centres. Stop closing shit down. Yeah. Like help people that are vulnerable and that. Put people in better housing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stop sending people to jail for stupid shit. Yeah. You know what I mean like. Are there any people that you think represent your views? Do you feel like the Labour Party represents? No. Nah. Why not? Because we're all full of shit, man. They're all like upper class people that have. You know what I mean? There's no. Yeah. There's no people who've actually lived it in there, is it? Is that something you would vote for if people were talking about like opening more youth centres and um, making fairer like justice system and things like that? Yeah. Um, because that that is what um, Jeremy Corbyn, the leader of the Labour Party, stands for at the moment. But everyone says that everyone makes like promises and that, but shit don't get done, does yeah. it? Yeah. The thing I would say about Jeremy Corbyn is that he's quite different from politicians that have come before. Like, do you know that none of the Labour Party want him basically like to be? No the one leader? wants him because he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, yo. Why do you think that? When he was saying stuff like, oh, he doesn't want to use, like, uh, the Trident missiles and all that shit. Yeah. Just like someone come over and just start blowing us up, like, what are you yeah. going to do? Pour him a cup of tea and be like, yeah, crack yeah. on. But do you know that Trident I mean, costs, like, £600 billion? Pounds? So if yeah. we didn't have Trident, all the things that you just said, youth centres, better justice system. Yeah, but the thing is, I don't actually care, like. You do? Well, I don't. You do? So how come all these politicians, how come they don't come round here mm. and meet people? It's conceivable at this by-election that UKIP might win, right? I mean, look what he said about Hillsborough, he, he yeah, lied about Yeah, exactly. I'm a Liverpool fan, by the way. So, really? Yeah. Well, there's Isn't a that, that's there's a, a good reason, reason yeah. Take a leaf at least. Yeah, I'm going to have one of those. Take one, because yeah. 
I, you know, th this community deserves change and this country needs people like you because like, otherwise you're going to get people like Paul Nussel standing up and saying, I'm what represents this, this place. Go and vote on Thursday mm. and vote for Labour and keep him out. Keep, do not let that man be from Stoke. Yeah. Yeah? Don't get too excited about whoever wins this by-election. You hear a lot of talk about Labour reinventing itself as a social movement or UKIP being the new party of the working class. You only really know that politics has changed. That people have started to make a difference. And the atmosphere changes here. And politics really starts to mean something to people and places like this.